What is up everybody? So if you just saw my most recent video, then you will know that I just went fishing at Falcon Lake for some crappie. Just like this one right here. Um, so in that video, we did catch a bunch of these crappie on the CFI uh, crappie jigs. Most of them on the hair jigs, one of them being um, on a Z-Man plastic with a CFI crappie jig head. Um, so today I'm going to show you all how to fillet them, how I at least fillet them. Uh, this is something that I struggled with when I first got into crappie fishing and when I first got into fishing in general um, You know, hear some noise in the background because my dad's actually washing the boat right now uh, Since we just got off the water, but I mean first things first you always have to fillet these fish and keep them as fresh as possible So uh, without further ado, let's actually get into that But what I'm gonna be showing you today is how to fillet these fish um, how I at least fillet them and how I learned and uh the different things I do to make sure that I get as much meat off of these fish as possible. So let's get right in. Okay guys, so let's get right into this. The first thing that you're gonna need, the first few things that you're actually gonna need um, is going to be a uh, work surface. So that would be any kind of table that you have. Um, second thing you would need is a cutting board. I like using plastic. Uh, plastic's a lot easier to clean uh, rather than wood that would actually absorb some of that crappie uh, slime. And the second thing, the third thing, sorry, that you would need is gonna be a towel. Um, any kind of towel that you don't ever use um, would work perfect. Um, on top of that, my personal preference, I like using two knives. You don't need two knives, but personally, um, I like to use two knives. So the first one that I have here, by the way, I'm not sponsored by any of these companies. I really wish I was, but unfortunately, I'm not. So the first one that I'm gonna be using today is going to be a Bubba Blade. Um, I just like the handle on it, it's very comfortable in the hand. And the second one is going to be that Rapala uh, wood handle. Um, I'll explain later on why I like using these. But um, yeah, this is basic essentials that you're gonna need uh, to get into filleting um, and how to fillet. Um, so yeah, that's, this is basically the stuff that you're gonna need. Okay guys, so the next step that you're gonna need to do after everything is cleaned up is uh, I like having a bucket with the fish in it um, that has some water. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna dip my hand in that bucket, get some of the water and put it onto our cutting board um, or your table, your work surface, whatever. That just kind of helps that slime not stick as bad. Um, also, I forgot to mention, you are gonna need paper towels. Um, biggest essential, mine are blue for some reason. I don't know why, but they are. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to reach into our bucket. We're going to grab one of our humongo slab crappie right there. Um, beautiful fish, beautiful, beautiful tasting fish. So boom, lay them on the table just like that, right? We're going to get our bubble blade. We're going to make an insertion right here behind the head. Let me move y'all in a little bit closer because um, y'all don't need to see me. Y'all just need to worry about what that fish looks like when I'm cutting him up. So let's actually move y'all right here right probably the This is hard. There you go. That's probably gonna be the best angle possible for you guys. So our first thing is gonna be right here. We're gonna make a small insertion. So we're just gonna get that knife and we are going to ooh, how can I show y'all that? There you go. That's that's it right there. So right here is where we're gonna go in. So we're just gonna start getting out those scales. We're gonna go all the way down till we feel bone with the tip of our blade. Then from there, what we're gonna do is we're gonna angle that knife. So we're gonna angle that knife a full 45 degrees, um, or 90, sorry. And we're just gonna cut along. What you wanna do is maintain pressure with their rib cage, or sorry, with their um, with the bone. So you wanna maintain pressure, but do not cut through it. Um, just as you saw me do there. And then what I like doing is right here, once I reach that tip of the tail, um, I'm gonna push my knife all the way through just like so and then I'm gonna keep going down just like that Then what I like to do is I like to get my thumb I like to stick my thumb under the uh, the flap that I just cut lift it up a little bit to where I can see um, And just start cutting maintaining pressure um, Maintaining that that blade stays along the bone all the, ooh. That scared me um these fish are dead. They just, uh, well, they have nerve endings, of course. Um, so what I'm going to do is just maintain um, pressure with the bone, as you can see there, how I got right along the bone. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip that fish away from me. 
So I'll make sure that the bottom of him is towards me. Um, make, making sure that I basically don't um, cut towards myself. Well, cutting towards myself actually. So what I'm actually gonna do there is I'm gonna keep that um, pressure against the rib cage now. I don't find the point in going with the rib cage. Um, I don't see a point in it. Um, I don't know, I just don't see a point in it. So after you get uh, one side of that crappie done, what you're gonna go ahead and do is do the other side now. So I'm just gonna do that real quick, just so y'all can see how I do it at my normal speed. Um, y'all keep seeing me wipe my blade over here. I don't like scales uh, on my blade. It kinda seems to dull it a little bit, but that's just me personally. So again, same thing, cut through. This time I'm gonna need it this way. And I'm just gonna keep going through, just like how I did the second time. Same thing, push that blade through. And then again, making sure that my knife stays against their, um, I wanna say back, but yeah, just making sure that my knife stays against the back of that fish. Um, cutting through again you want the bottom of that fish facing you uh, it makes it easier make sure you don't cut your fingers and you're just gonna keep pushing through just like that boom you have two perfect fillets let me show you all how this fish ended up so the other side's a little too bloody for me to show on YouTube but as you can see there is little to no meat left on that fish um, almost a perfect fillet So then you go and discard, discard of the carcass, um, and now you're left with two pieces of uh, fish with the skin on. If you want to eat it with the skin on, that is completely up to you, but what I'm going to do next is skin it, which is where, um, when I was first starting, I had the biggest problem with butchering these fish. So as I said earlier, and I mentioned earlier why I use these two knives, um, so this one is a little bit duller than the bubble blade. So the one that you use to cut through the fish, you always want to be sharper um, than the one that you're gonna use to skin. Uh, reason for that, you don't wanna cut yourself. But also, if you use a duller blade when you're skinning, you don't have to worry about cutting through the actual skin. So here, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna lift this tab up with my fingers, keeping that blade at like a 45 degree angle and just gently pushing through I like to do a little sawing motion. Some people just slide straight through it. I feel like sawing through it or um, seeing like I'm cutting um, actually gets all of that meat off of the skin as you see there. And you end up with a perfect filet. Um, if you wanna go one step further, which I usually do, um, what I like to do is I like to line the filet up just like this. And you're gonna see how there's a, there's a kind of a drop right there. What I like to do is put my blade right up against the edge of that drop, just like that, and just pull off that little side, that little side skirt of it. And then come right here and just cut that ending off. Usually this is filled with bones, um, where you might clip the rib, or you might, uh, it's usually where you clip the rib, um, where that meat would end up being filled with bones. But right here is what you get, and this is what you get a perfect filet of just beautiful white crappie meat where you don't have to worry about bones, you don't have to pay anyone to do this for you anymore. Now you can always do it yourself. I actually use this same technique on every fish. Um, I've been able to do it with uh, sheep's head, reds, snook, um, whatever species you guys end up catching, bass, catfish even. Um, just catfish, the skinning process is just a little bit different. but. The filleting is the exact same and it is the easiest thing in the world to do. So there you go guys. That is how you get two beautiful pieces of meat. Hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it really helped you guys. Please let me know in the comments what I can improve on, on explaining. If y'all didn't get the concept, I can definitely show y'all again. Um, if y'all want to see how I do it with saltwater fish, snook, sheep's head, um, reds, anything like that. 
um, let me know down in the comments below and I can definitely show y'all later on how I do it with those and see if it differs any from how I do crappie. Y'all take care. Please remember to like and subscribe if y'all like this kind of content.